Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about what you need to be a mobile hunter. Okay, so we're going to break that stuff down. Now as far as st sticks, stands, saddles, we're going to save that part to the end. We're going to cover that. But first I want to get into some of this other essential items. If you want to be able to run and gun, go from different stands, every different sit, which is a definition of a mobile hunter. Somebody who can pick, pick up their phone or look on their computer and go, okay, you either have preset, or not preset stands, but you have preset locations that you can go and hang a stand in, or you go to places you've never been before, which we call going in blind. Um, but that's the method of hunting that you're going to do, where you are not going to a place that already has a stand hung. It gives you a tremendous amount of freedom. It's a wonderful way to hunt. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, I've tried everything out there there is, and, and I, there are some items that are mandatory regardless of what system you want to use. First off, that you are going to need to use, you are going to need a harness, all right, for your stand. Or if you are using a saddle, your saddle becomes your harness, okay? But if you are using a tree stand, you will need either a full body harness, like you're seeing here. Make sure it has lineman belt loops on there, something that you can connect a lineman belt to. So if I were to take and put this harness on, which is probably all tangled, and it is, but if I were to put this on and I have this wrapped around me, I have lineman belt loops right here on each side okay that is mandatory to have those loops for me to be able to run a lineman belt but you will need a harness a full body type harness like this or if you don't want to go that route you can go like i have this year i went to a rock climbing harness but i still as you see here i have lineman belt loops on this these are not gear loops okay understand it i'm going to say it again for you very importantly these are not gear loops Okay, when you buy a harness, you'll see a lot of them. You have your front tether point right here, but you will see them and they will have loops on the side, sewn in, okay? Those loops are to hang extra carabiners and gear on. They are not life load supporting. They are not load bearing. They are not climb rated. These loops that I put on here are, I, I did a video on how I made this harness. These are 24 kiloton uh, rated webbing straps that I have on here. And I just held them in place by sewing a piece of, uh, of uh, three inch or two inch and a half nylon across there just to keep them from sliding around. But I made that myself on there, but you will need to make sure that your lineman belts, if you go to the rock climbing harness, you either put them on or you could even just uh, take something like this and just lash them right around here if you want, whatever you want to do. Make sure you have lineman belt loops on there. Okay, mandatory. Now if I start sweating like crazy, sorry, it's actually today is 97 degrees. Today is brutal hot here. That's why I'm actually in my garage in here. Uh, just because the, the, the mosquitoes and black flies right out there are actually pretty horrible. But it is really hot. Um, so if I'm sweating, sorry. Um, next thing you're going to need is a lineman belt. Now you can buy a lineman belt pre-made. The ones from Lone Wolf Hunting Products are phenomenal. They are expensive though. They're about 40 bucks. But you can buy one of them. They are still a Prusik knot style where that knot will slide up and down. And I don't have one here handy without climbing up to go get one. Actually, I can show you probably on this lifeline right here. I have a lifeline right here hanging here and I will show you. But this is technically a Prusik knot, okay? So this is how you would connect to with the carabiner on there and see how this knot slides on here. That's how you're going to adjust your way in and out on that lineman belt from that tree. You'll have this knot and you can slide it and take the slack up. That's a Prusik knot. Okay, and it does work. And there's a lot of them out there that have that style system on there and they work very well and they will do good for you. However, a Prusik knot usually requires two hands to actually adjust and work it. My custom lineman belt that I've been building for the last 20 years with a Rope Man 1 Ascender, I've done videos on this. I'll have some at the end here linked for you so you can see it. But this is one-handed operation. Okay, You can take the slack up with one hand. When you want to go out, you just grab this with your hand like that, and then you lean your body back and it slides. So you have total control with what you want to do with this, and it is ultra lightweight. Aluminum carabiners, aluminum Rope Man, simple but you need a lineman belt, okay? What this is gonna do is it is gonna let you stay connected to that tree. If you're used to hanging and hunting preset stands, when you put that stand in the tree, and then you go through all your monkey business hanging it, sweating your butt off, doing all that stuff in the summer or whatever you do, and then when you come back, you're just gonna clip into like a, a tether, lifeline that's hanging, you clip in and you climb up, or you're just gonna climb up and clip in when you get up there, that's not going to work for a mobile hunter. We do not already have a stand up there, and we do not have a lifeline up there. So in order for us to safely 
climb trees as often as we're going to, we need a lineman belt connected to us to get us up that tree. Doesn't matter if you're in a saddle, tree stand, what it is, a lineman belt is mandatory. Uh, and then it gives you, not only does it keep you safe, it gives you both hands free. So when you get up and you hang in your sticks, you can, when you, you, st you step on a tree and you're on your first stick and then you grab your second stick, you got both hands free. You're not hanging out with one hand and juggling and trying to fight with it. You can literally let both hands free and let that lineman belt hold you. Get your other stick, use two hands to put it on a tree, lock it, climb up, shimmy up with your lineman belt. When you go to hang your stand or connect your saddle tether in, you have both hands free. It is a wonderful thing. Lineman belt, I cannot say it enough. Lineman belt, lineman belt, lineman belt, mandatory. If you don't have one of these, get one, buy one, build one, mandatory. So that is important right there. If you're gonna be a mobile hunter, you need it. There is no questions, there is no if, ands, or buts, there's no workarounds, loops, shortcuts, any options. Get a lineman belt, all right? So I can't say that enough. Another thing I would not hunt without um, being a mobile hunter is going to be a headlamp. Mandatory item. I mean, there's a million things you can carry, but these are mandatory, uh, you know, mobile hunting items. A good headlamp. Why? Because you need it to, A, be hands-free, okay? You, you know, the days of holding a flashlight in your mouth and choking on a thing because you can't swallow your spit or do something are long gone. They've been gone for 25 years. I did that like two times, and that was 25 years ago. Then you find a headlamp. Now having a good headlamp is important, especially when it has multiple outputs like this Phoenix does. This is the HMR, is this the 50, yeah, HMR, or H, HM50R. I now have five of these. I've done reviews on them, a couple of reviews on them now. They're on my channel, but this, uh, this headlamp blows every zebra light I've ever owned out. This is the gold pinnacle headlamp as far as a, one, a single cell CR123 battery goes, in my opinion, hands down, without fail. Like I said, I got them in every truck. I got them in all my packs. I got them everywhere. They're, they're incredible lights. Um, but a good headlamp, because now you are not just walking from your truck 100 yards or whatever to your tree stand or 500 yards, whatever it is, and then just climbing up and turning the light off. You need to be able to hang that stand. You also need to be able to come down and take everything down with you and remove the stand and the sticks and be able to see everything down there as you pack it all up. And then on top of that, you are going into places you may or may, you may have never been before, so you need to be able to really crank that power up so you can scout as you're going and really see what's going on out there, okay? So the, the having a good quality headlamp, mandatory. The adjustable beam, also mandatory from the fact that when you need high power, you can get it. But when you don't, you can save that battery life because you're using it a lot more. Again, instead of a 10 minute walk to your stand, now it's a 10 minute walk to where you're going. It's uh, five, eight, 10 minutes for you to climb up in a tree. When you get down in the dark, it's five, eight, 10 minutes down in the dark, five minutes to pack up down there, six minutes to pack up, then your 10 minute walk out. You're using it four times as much. So being able to dim that to a lower setting as you're coming down a tree so that you just need to see what you're working on without being blinded is gold. When you're at the bottom of the tree, you can use it on dim and get everything set, then real quickly bump it up and make sure as you do a quick look around, make sure nothing fell out of your pack or you didn't lose anything. Mandatory, vitally important to have a good quality headlamp. Next thing on there, this is a recommendation. Whether it's on your phone, doesn't matter if you have uh, like Onyx or something on your phone or you're using a GPS, but these are really important to have out there when you're doing this stuff because it lets you mark things that you find along the way. It lets you bread trail crumb your way in, and then when you get there, if you want to come back and hunt it again the next time and you want to follow that same route, you can bread trail crumb your way out. If you kill an animal, this is a good way to mark it, be able to blood trail it, and if you're in areas you've never been before, you may get somewhere in, you're thinking you're going to one spot, you end up stopping at a different spot because the sign was good on your way in, you hunt that spot, and then you kill a deer, and that deer takes off, and you start blood trailing it, this may show you that you don't have to go all the way back to where you did dragging that deer. You might kill that deer, and he might die 150 or 400 yards from another two-track that you didn't even know was there. This or your uh, Onyx or something on your phone will show you that. You can then mark where that animal went down at, know where that, and then mark where that road is where you expect to come to, backtrack out of there, get your truck, drive around wherever you gotta go to that spot, then just hike in, grab that deer and drag it right there. So they come in very valuable for so many different reasons. Some kind of a, of a navigation system that shows you what is going on around you is important as far as trails, two tracks, farm roads, things like that. Um, another one is vital, in my opinion, gonna be binoculars. If you're mobile hunting, you want binoculars. I carry all mine in a hat, why? Because a hat protects them 
and it gives me a hat in my bag. It's always good to have a hat. So I do not use binocular cases. I use a hat. Um, I have my Swarovski 7x30s right here. They've been what I use forever. And I also have these Vortex, which I use now mainly for my pig hunting and stuff like that. Um, and these usually stay in my truck, but I love these too. These are incredible little binoculars, these little uh, Vortex uh, uh, 8x30s. So either one of these are great options. They don't make these anymore. They're not even available. These they do and they're dirt cheap and these are the HD models and they're incredible. But binoculars, okay? Binoculars are what we're gonna call as mandatory for sure. Especially if you're hunting a place you've never been before or again as a mobile hunter, you're not using your same stands over and over again so you're not quite aware what's going on. You climb up in the morning in the dark, daylight starts to break, you can use these, oh, is that a scrape over there? Is that a new rub over there? Is that, oh, I see that scrape there, is it fresh? I can put them up and say, oh, yep, there's tracks in it. Oh, is that, I hear acorns falling, is that a white oak? Yep, that's a white oak over there. Oh, look it, I can still see them on the ground. I can see, is there just nuts? Or is it, or, I mean, just caps? Or are there actually acorns down there too? Is it something they're hitting? Are they not? What's below my tree? Do I have actual acorns here? Or is it maybe just caps left here? Am I a day late and dollar short in this tree? Do I need to move there. These give you the option to solve and figure that out. Not to mention being able to identify animals, watching wildlife go on around you. They're just, there's no reason not to carry binoculars in the woods. Plain and simple, just straight up, no reason not to have them. They're kind of mandatory. Then again, you want to save yourself and multi-purpose them, carry them in a hat. Okay, it's better than carrying them in a bino bag and then carrying a hat separately. Plus it's nice and quiet. There's no zippers or Velcro. I wrap the strap around it like that. I take them, stick them inside the hat, Fold it over itself once like this, kind of like rolling your lip over, like uh, some of the governors today should do. They should just take their bottom lip, pull it right over their head and swallow. Same concept with this. Makes a nice little simple pack. Okay, I do the same thing with these ones. Just fold it through once like that, take that. No noise, no anything. Very fast and easy. Set them in there, flip one lip over, take the other lip, flip it over, and then I just stick that right in my pack. I have a hat and I have bino, so it works really good. Now, once you have that, you are gonna need this stuff away to carry it. Plus some of your other essentials or things that you wanna carry. Again, these are what we call the base. This is mandatory. Included in that is going to be a backpack, something that is gonna let you carry this stuff in. So for practical purposes right now, I'm just throwing stuff into it um, so we can show you, but you will definitely want to have a pack that's capable of carrying whatever your system is that you're going to run, whether it's a saddle or it's tree stands, you are going to need something that is going to let you carry your gear in. I do not like to wear my harness into the stand. I prefer to put it on at the base of the tree. Personal preference. You do whatever you want to do, but that's just how I personally feel. I do not want to carry it in. Um, but so you will need a pack that will carry your saddle or carry your sticks in your stand and all your other gear in for you. And when you have it, you got your setup right there like that and you are good to go. As far as stands and sticks, or packs, I'm sorry, as far as packs go, I, I've done a lot of videos on packs. There's a tremendous amount of packs out there, a lot of great ones. For me, mandatory to have outside compression straps, okay? These straps on the outside right here are mandatory because this is how I carry my stands in. So I take that pack, I set it down here on the ground like that. I take my sticks and my stands, which is all one rig. This is a Lone Wolf Assault 2. And these are Lone Wolf Climbing Sticks, three of them. I have on here, I have two swim noodles to keep there. This one has actually got a notch in it, so it sits right on my center post. This one is just one I cut in half that's big enough that fits so that they, you know, keeps that stuff from rattling on anything or resting on that, uh, that bracket on there. So everything is dead quiet. I have yak grips on my buckles to keep them quiet as well too. A couple rubber straps to hold it. This system does not make a sound. It does not rattle. It does not move. It is flawless. This is perfect. I've been using this system for a long time. I love it. Now, when I want to carry this in, you have a couple of different options. For me, I put this whole rig right here on my pack. So I take my backpack straps, just kind of set them right in the middle. I set this right on here and I use those last straps and I come right up through like this. I go right up and over and around. Hang on, that one's caught in there. And I come right to it here like this and I just lash them together and it's set. That locks that on. I do the same thing with the bottom one here. Bring that one up. Where am I at here? Right here. But I bring that one right up and through comes right up and over. This one comes right to it. And I lock them together and I pull it tight and that's it. My stand and sticks are on my pack. Everything is done and set and that's how I carry them. 
Now when I'm carrying this, I want it low in, you know, low slung and so I don't have that big profile. So with this setup on here, I do not have to worry about having anything sticking up above my head. It is a perfect compact system when I get all buckled up. But notice nothing peeking up above me that's going to snag on trees and branches. And I'm not putting this whole thing on and getting all locked in because it's, like I said, it's hot. But it is a simple, easy, flawless system for me that is pretty snag free. Now when I wear my other packs, like my Exo Mountain Pack or my Mystery Ranch that are uh, frame packs with load sling capabilities, there are times that I may put that stand and sticks between the frame and the bag. So it will actually fit right in here between there uh, and takes it in even more compact. But whatever your system is that you want to use, figure it out, make sure you test it ahead of time so that you know it works and it works good. For me, this system here has been flawless. I get to the tree, pop two buckles, there's my rig right there. So it is a very simple process there. Now, another thing that you can do if you do not want to carry um, as much stuff or maybe you're not going to put your harness in there or maybe you're hunting closer to the roads where you don't need uh, to carry as much gear or put extra clothing in there like I do. My packs are not heavy, okay? This thing does, it weighs like 15 pounds and that's because it's mostly clothing when I'm hunting, okay? People say, oh your pack is way too big. I've never seen somebody deer hunting such a big pack. If you look at my pack videos, there's very little gear in there. Most of it is clothing. There's like five pounds of gear in, in, in there. It's not heavy, but it gives me places to put all my clothes. So I do not look like this when I'm walking into my stand. I'm sweating like crazy. Again, it's almost 100 degrees right now. So for me, it's really hot right now. But if I, you know, if I'm out there on a 50 degree day and it's going to get down into the 20s at night, I need clothing that will keep me warm. I can fit it inside my bag. Go in in just a t-shirt in my pants, get set up and stay nice and comfortable and not sweat. And when I get on stand and I cool down, put on more layers. So I like having a pack. If you do not and you want to run just to stand in something smaller, I got one right here actually. Like for example, this is actually my, my truck bag. This goes with me in my truck. We'll take this off here. But uh, this just goes in with me in every vehicle. Kind of a walk home bag, anything I need is in here. But so we take this here. So say you were using a bag this size and you wanted to just run the stand, you can take this and just drape it. I'll put it on a table here to show you. Just take this and drape the straps. I have this set to be pretty tight because I'm not wearing it. There we go. But for example, you could put it right on there like that, even running it lower. You know, let the slack out on these. I, like I said, I, this just doesn't, there's, it just goes in my truck right now. Okay, but you could put that on there that way so that it sits right on your pack and just hangs there like that and then you can use the straps that are on your tree stand and a hip belt if you want to and you can carry it like this if you want to do something like this and not go with that big of a pack. So now I have my stands, my sticks, everything right there sweet, simple and easy and I have a pack on it. When I get to my tree, I hunted this way for a lot of years but then I even put a hip belt on the tree stand that took some of that weight off there too. Not a bad way to go. Doesn't matter what system you go with, pack system like this and the stick and stands on a pack, or if you go with, uh, you know, wearing a hip belt and good shoulder straps on the, on the stand and hanging your pack on there, either way, doesn't really matter what your preference is, both of them will completely work. Now if you're saddle hunting, doesn't matter there either. You can go with a saddle and a platform that will fit in your bag. You can rig something up like this, like I said, I turned this in, I mean this, this came out of, I don't know, I'm going to say I probably tried 25, 30 different methods of mounting all this stuff using different things and it came down to being the best thing I've had for the last five years is two swim noodles and a couple bungee straps. Best invention I've ever had, nice, tight, compact, super slim design, very easy and dead quiet. I mean, you know, so like I said, you can create whatever you need for your saddle system, whether you're putting it all inside of bags, you're rolling it up and carrying it on your stand with bungee cords, Figure it out, but you're going to need these essential items, and this is that base for your mobile hunting. Without it, your mobile hunting is not going to happen, okay? You have got to use these kind of things to figure it out. These are mandatory items. Uh, I'll put some links down below for some of it for you, help make it a little easier, and, um, and hopefully it gets you a good start and gets you in the right direction. So thanks for watching. We'll be back with more stuff soon, hopefully on a cooler day, because like I said, it's pretty brutal out here. We'll talk to you later. Bye.